I open with our, uh, our series, uh, and I want to thank all of you who spent time praying. I remember in September, I asked that you pray whenever I go away to seek the Lord for the direction, spiritual direction for this church. It is always a pivotal time because it's, folks, it's not easy to just say, okay, we're gonna go in this direction. You've got to know the mind of the spirit. What is the Lord saying for us as a congregation? Where does God want us to grow? How does God want us to grow? And in September, when I ask you to pray, as I go and seek the Lord, I sat in a cabin up north and I waited on the Lord. And this is what came back to me from the spirit of the Lord was to go through the book of Hebrews. He had been, it had been stirring in my heart and other books were stirring and I bought a number of different books, but I sat before the Lord and said, God, where am I going with this? And what the Lord revealed to me is declare the superiority of Christ. For 2020, we're beginning this season, we're going to week after week declare the superiority of Christ. Unashamedly, unembarrassedly, we're going to declare it. And as I broke down the text for week after week, and the pastors will be sharing this journey with me, they've been aware of it since the fall, I want you to know, friends, this is a power-packed book that is going to set us up for the journey we take in Christ, in God. Happy New Year. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I begin the superiority of Christ. Father, I can't do it without you. I've never been able to do it without you. I don't ever want to be able to do it without you. So burn through this vessel and let the word of God be strong in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. I begin today with the message, confusion and complexities, yet Christ is. There's so much confusion, so much complexity, yet Christ is. Christ is Christ is what? He's superior to all. He's superior to all. On New Year's Eve, I opened with Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Jesus Christ is God's son. Here's the text in Hebrews 1 for those who weren't here New Year's Eve. What a great night we had, all those who were here. Yea and amen. Hallelujah. Long ago, Hebrews 1. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to his son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. The son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins... He sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. Isn't that just powerful? The majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. Troy sang today his great name, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Troy. And what we, well, can I ask, what will we believe and receive this year as we embrace this 2020 year? The clarity is needed for the blurriness of our lives. There's a blurriness in society and we need spiritual clarity to be able to see clearly. And only Christ can give spiritual clarity. Can I hear an amen this morning? See, the concept of 2020 is used to signify perfected vision. Isn't that what they do? We all know that. When your vision is off on any side, they try to correct it with these correctors. Uh, But when it's 2020, you don't need anything. Can you put that in your spirit, God, in this 2020 year? Would you give me 2020 vision? Not not, Not just physically, but give me 2020 vision spiritually. Can you tweet that one out, young people? 2020 vision for 2020. That's what we want. What will you be seeking? I ask you seek God for this. There's so much confusion, so much complexity, and Christ never changes. He is still superior to all. So on New Year's Eve, I shared the first part of that passage. Let me now continue in today's passage, which continues Hebrews chapter 1. 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5 to 14. The sun is greater than the angels. For God, verse 5, for God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. You are my son. Today I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father. He will be my son. And when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let all of God's angels worship him. Regarding the angels, he said, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants like flames of fire. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You rule with a scepter of justice. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. He also says to the Son, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will fold them up like a cloak and discard them like old clothing, but you are always the same. You live forever forever. Verse 13, and God never said to any of the angels, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. Father, make our quest not angels or things or substance, But let it be Christ and Christ alone. The first point I want to share this morning, there's so much confusion. There's confusion everywhere. Confusion. Everything is blurry. Politically, today in North America or in America, there's two strong parties, yet there's no peace and there's no true prosperity. In Canada today, we have five splintering parties, but no true direction. Similar struggles are existing around the world. Around the world, there's political upheaval. There's no true determination of where hope or peace will be offered. And yet, it has never changed that hope and peace is in Christ Jesus. This is the answer for the world. This everything is blurry. Socially, there's increased demands for more social outlets while people are still becoming more increasingly depressed and despondent. Can you imagine? We're in a day where we have more social outlets and greater depression. There's no correlation with the two because emotionally, it's when we're stabilized in Christ in God that we're able to make it through whatever is in society. And so there is so much blurriness and people have so much knowledge but have so much stupidity. They're both uh, 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 at the same level of each other. Uh, Spiritually, people are becoming more spiritually hungry while increasingly being more religiously intolerant. Have you ever seen a decade where everyone is spiritual, but there's so much uh, uh, apostasy, so much uh, uh, sacrilegious behavior, so much uh, uh, antagonism towards the, the scripture and towards the word of God? And so there's, it's a defunct here where there's a spiritual hunger, but what you see more is a religious intolerance. Uh, and spiritual hunger cannot be satisfied or appeased by anything. It can only be quenched by Jesus Christ. Drinking the water of life, that's what makes the difference. So in 2020, this is a great year to focus on the superiority of Christ and the blessings that Christ offers. In in verse 1 to 4 where it says, Because Christ inherited everything from God, he has granted everything unto us. That is the blessing of being saved, folks. And this year you're going to walk in that blessing. God, because of what you've done, I can walk in peace, in hope, in strength, in power. I don't walk in fear. I walk in faith. And by faith, all things shall be be done. Is there an amen in the house this morning? See, the world needs to submit to the one who is supreme. Supreme means above all, above all. And we are not going to surrender our uh, 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 spirituality, our religion, our religious affinity with Christ. We're not going to surrender it to the world's take on it because I don't care what everyone says. One thing I know, my God is superior to all. Amen? Secondly, there's so much complexity. 
So much complexity that vision is impaired. See, while we're seeking to promote more simplicity, the lifestyles we're embarking on are more complex. And again, it's that parody of what is going on. The simplest thing now has become complicated. Uh, can I ask you, I don't know which one of the cities you live in, but is anybody, like, do you feel like putting out the garbage is a full-time job? It's just, it, it, it's like we're just putting out garbage, but it's a full-time job doing all of yours. Everything is complex. You go to the supermarket, and now they're helping us with all the self-check-in or self-checkout. Sorry, not in. This one's out. Now they're gonna check. You're buying your food. You're paying higher prices, and you're gonna check out. You can't find the code for the apple, and the lady's just standing there looking at you, going, "You'll get it." And you're thinking, hello? I, I mean, it, it's, it just, it, it's creating anxiety. And what do we, we're, in one hand, we're creating what they say, simplicity, but yet it's creating greater anxiety. Isn't that an incredible thing? You, you know what, what gets me? Is, I don't know how many, there's a lot of people here who are flying uh, and flying frequently. Those of you who haven't flown for a while, prepare yourself. There's a new world out there called airplanes. You know, we're at the point now with travel where everything has to be purchased. You know, you purchase your ticket. That's what you used to do way back then. And when you purchase your ticket, it came with everything. Now you purchase your tickets and it's like, do you want to bring bags? Well, yeah, well, you better pay for that. Do you know what's interesting? There's a new uh, airline, uh, 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 is it Zoom, Zoom, Soup, Soup, Soup. Yeah, swoop, and it's swooping out of Hamilton. Okay, but here's the good thing about the good news. With swoop, you are going to get a low fare. It's just that I, I'm a bit scared for those who didn't check all the lines because, you know, you, get, you pay for the fare, but you haven't paid for your bags. You haven't paid for your seat. You haven't paid for your carry-on. You haven't paid. I mean, pretty soon, they're going to have airlines where, um, you know, you know, you'd need to pay for your landing. How would you like it? W would you like a, a water landing or a tarmac? That would, tarmac is priority. Water landing is a little cheaper. Or may, maybe we could just land you in a tree with a air, hot air balloon. That could be a little bit low price, you know? I, 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 I'm, I'm just... We're, we're making it so, we say we're simplifying, but it is becoming complicated. And we're forced to embrace more technology to save ourselves time, but yet people are falling into technological burnout. And friends, here's the good news with the bad news. Technology is our friend. It's not going to change. So we're going to have to embrace the complexities. But how are we going to find peace when it's all stressful? We're going to find peace in Christ in God. That is why, folks, as believers, we don't need to stress each other out. There's enough stress in life. We need to now cause people to come in and find this to be a place of refuge. Can I hear another amen? amen. Stress is everywhere. The fun, but one fundamental thing remains. What remains, folks? What remains? What's the fundamental thing that remains? Jesus Christ. The same yesterday today and forever. See, when we fix our vision on Christ, we will see clearly. 2020 means clearly seeing Christ, walking with Christ. Why? Because Jesus, the Son of God, is greater than the angels. Do you know, in this book of Hebrews, they're trying to show us, the writer of Hebrews trying to show us, people are open to angels, but they're not open to Christ. The writer of Hebrews is trying to show you, if you said to someone, I pray an angel visit you, oh, thank you very much. I pray Jesus visit you. What are you trying to do to me? But the writer of Hebrews is trying to say, people are open to angels, but he's saying, Jesus is superior to the angels. The angels bow at his feet. The angels adore him. The angels worship him. And we need to be careful that we don't begin to get caught up in the mystical while we forget the practical, which is Jesus is superior to everything that people want. And we need to recognize that we have to see clearly by fixing our eyes, not on this thing that happens or that thing that happens, but on Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. That's the powerfulness of this book of Hebrews. 
So I wanna give us just a little synopsis of where we're gonna go this year. You don't wanna miss Sundays because you're gonna go deeper in Christ. We're gonna go stronger in the Lord. We're gonna go stronger in the word. Do you know what Hebrews is trying to show us? Trying to show us in this 2020 year filled with confusion and complexity. Don't ignore the word of God. Don't make it a little side thing. Don't make it your pastime. Don't make it the end of night where you have no more energy left. Don't, uh, don't allow your, your, your social media to take priority over the word of God. Many people wake up and the first thing is to check their Facebook, check their Twitter page, check their everything, check their uh, TikTok, check their everything. Can I tell you, TikTok, TikTok, tick, better get inside the word. This is what's going to make the difference in our lives. We've got to get back to the word of God. As mentioned, Pastor Rob just mentioned, we're ma trying to make it simple. And many, there's still at least two and a half boxes of books left there. And the year has started. It, this helps you to read through the Bible. As you're reading through the Bible, every time you read, you discover something new. Every time you read it, you discover something new. And breaking it down helps you to remain consistent so that every day you're driven to go back to the word. Folks, it doesn't matter what angel shows up. If we are not in the word, we are not with Christ. Christ and the word are one. Amen? So I want to take us through this this morning. See, Jesus, he is perfect and pure. Why are we going to devote our lives to reading the word, to getting to know our Lord Jesus better, to, to stay in focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is perfect and pure. There's no other person, no other entity, no other being that can claim perfection and purity. Jesus is perfect and pure. And through this book of Hebrews, we're going to find out that Jesus, he is the energy who enlightens our life. Do you know what? What we need now we need energy to help us go through the difficulties and the, the the drain of life Jesus is that energy Jesus is the force who pushes back darkness darkness is everywhere darkness is pervading our society but Jesus is the source that pushes back darkness Jesus is the power who overrules all other powers. As we hear of all the wars and fightings and everything, and hearts are going to fail people, but when you get to know who your Lord Jesus Christ is, no matter what's going on, cause the waters can be raging, the fires are burning, but we still will walk through it all because Jesus overrules all other powers. Jesus is the order who turns chaos back into proper arrangement. There's so much chaos, but who can turn it around? Tell me the name of the government who can, please. Would someone tell me? There's only one person. And we, when we begin to live it out, we're communicating to the world that we have encountered the Christ, the son of the living God. That's why it's important our growth, because if we don't grow, the world can't grow to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the God of unity. He takes our struggles and turns it back into peaceful tranquility. No, I mean, folks, there's so much animosity and anger and hate and rage. But where does the peace line come? It only comes back through Jesus Christ. Do you know, even as Christians, there are times there's so much animosity and anger and, and discord and all of these things. The struggles that come and rips out the unity and rips out your peace. But how do you find the line? so that you could find your joy back. It's when you begin to just embrace Jesus and walk on with him, then everything changes. Chaos is on one side. Tranquility, I'm sorry, chaos is on one side. Discord is on the other. Everything is seemed to rip you apart. But when you get entrenched and enwrapped and en 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 enshrouded in the power of Jesus Christ and in the name of Jesus Christ, it'll all be on the left, it'll be on the right, it'll be all around you can even surround you like bees but the Lord will raise you up because your eyes are fixed upon him church I want to tell you that's where we have to go this year that's who we have to become each and every one of us are you feeling that in your spirit this morning hallelujah Jesus is the God of solidarity 
He fights for our best and mutual interest. Governments and kingdoms will ultimately submit to him. And guess what? He doesn't fight against us. He fights for us. Do you know there are different religions where they fight against you if you don't do what they say, whereas Jesus fights for us. What a privilege. How many have been, you've been through the, the, the ringer. You've been through times where even you have failed, but Jesus fought for you and brought you through. Oh, what a savior. That's why the songwriter says, hallelujah, what a savior. Hallelujah, what a friend. Keeping, saving, helping, loving. He will keep us to the end. My friends, the second part I got to share with you, Jesus is perfect. He's the one who upholds everything by his mighty power. I want you to get this in your spirit, church. He upholds everything by his mighty power. When the church begins to fear things, we then do not know how to trust God. My God upholds everything. I don't care what thing, how thing, who thing. My God upholds it. Whatever he upholds, there comes a time he can also remove. So whatever we're seeing, I notice I've been praying and praying and praying for that billboard by the church. I claimed that billboard. I've claimed that billboard. And I notice that they took the side that faces us. And I'm like, the blood is against you. Yeah, I think you got it. But you know what? I may not have have gotten that but my God has us held in the palm of his hands we're in a rich place we're in a luxurious place we're in an amazing place because guess what we don't fight our own battles there's a warring heaven a roaring heaven that's roaring on our behalf and as he does for his church so he does for you his bride in the name of Jesus would you receive that today Jesus, the perfect one, is the one who keeps evil from completely conquering our lives or utterly destroying our destiny, which is Satan's goal. When you see how people have allowed their lives to be ripped apart, you realize that they've allowed evil to conquer them. But Jesus, when your eyes are fixed on him, when your hands are in his hands, when you allow yourself to be in his grip, he is the one who will completely conquer uh, 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 the enemy for us and cause us to walk in our destiny. There's a destiny over each of your lives and you may not be fulfilling it completely, but God Almighty still offers you the opportunity through Jesus Christ to live out your destiny and not let evil conquer, conquer you. You don't have to fight evil yourself. Jesus Christ has already destroyed the evil one. You just have to trust in him. And Jesus is the righteousness who stands up for all humans and declares us righteous before God. Imagine amidst all of our imperfections that Jesus declares us righteous. Think about it. Think about yourself. Think about some things you've done in the past. Think about where you've been. Think about who you were. And Jesus now declares you righteous. Is there any God on earth that could ever do that? No, only the God of heaven, the one who came to earth. Friends, grip it inside your spirit wrap it inside your soul and let it be a weapon against the enemy devil I may have some imperfections but Jesus declares me righteous before him and I plan to walk in the way of truth of love of peace of joy of hope and continue to be declared righteous before my God oh my friends I want to share with you this morning if you could only fall in love with Jesus one more time if in this 2020, you could make it your mission to fall in love with Jesus. It will not be to your destruction. It will be to your greater destiny. Can I hear an amen this morning? Oh, glory to God. And lastly, whatever you're faced with this year, remember Jesus Christ is superior. Book of Hebrews, let me tell you some of the things that's going to come out of this great book. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come out of this great book. That Jesus, he's greater than the angelic forces. He's the supreme mediator. He, he alleviates us, sorry, he elevates us to unexpected realms. He elevates us, lifts us up to unexpected realms. He grants superior blessings to those who know him. He gives us a better hope for a better future. He secures a better covenant for us. He renews our relationship with God. He guarantees us better promises, the yea and the amen. 
He is the real deal, not a fake copy or a version of him. He is the real deal. There's so much fake, but he's the real deal. I can't wait for that message to come. He assures us of rewards that we do not deserve. Ah, oh, friends, this is gonna be the power pack time. He assures us. He doesn't, he doesn't just make a statement. He assures us of rewards that we don't even deserve. He's the lasting and everlasting. He's not a short-term answer. Everything else is short-term, but he is everlasting. He demonstrates perfection even in the midst of our chaos, and he speaks and he grants forgiveness and healing to all. Oh, what a savior. Hallelujah, what a savior. Hebrews reminds us that angels are mighty agents of God, but Christ is superior to them all. You know, there are many people looking for an angel. We're looking for Christ. Angels, it says in Hebrews, they may surround the throne of God. It says Hebrews 1, angels may surround the throne of God, but Christ sits on the throne. There are people today who worship all other things, looking for this and hearing this and, and, and seeking signs and this. But come tell you, if you seek the Lord Jesus Christ, it shall be well. Folks, angels are sent from God's throne room to work for the good of the church. Angels are sent from God's throne room to work for the good of the church, but Christ is the bridegroom of the church. When you come in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you become married to the one who loves you more than you could ever love even yourself. Folks, this is is the assurance we have this year. As you walk in this journey, as you live out your life, don't live it in fear. Don't live it in doubt. Don't live it speculatively. Live it in the power of who Christ is in you and what it means for you to be a child of God. We, I, I've said it many times from this pulpit, and I'll say it again. Do not be embarrassed about your Christianity. In 2020, walk it out with pride. Live it out with pride. I serve a risen Savior. He, Jesus Christ, is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. He sits on the throne on my behalf. He's constantly making intercession for me. There is nothing that can fulfill my life as Christ will fulfill my life. What do I need to do? Christ and the word are one. I need to get myself so embedded into the word that I get to know my Jesus better. When we get to know our Jesus better, we don't, we don't, we don't strive and, 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 and belabor God for a miracle. We walk into our miracle with authority. We walk into our miracle with faith. We walk into our miracle with confidence and we know the God who promised us is able to deliver. This is a year the world needs to see who we are and in this church, we're going to demonstrate it by the life we live before others. There are many things that God has cleaned up in the last two years. He's cleaned out a lot of the cobweb. And maybe sometimes you wonder, what's he doing? He's cleaning it up so his glory can come. When we said, God, we're believing for a move. The move is upon us. But God had to do some housework. You don't see a tree grow unless you prune it. You don't see... Um, Plant, uh, plants grow unless you fertilize it or water it. And God has been doing some awesome work in this place. Uh, oh, it's been rough on some and it's been difficult on others. But can you rise up in your spirit and say, God, I'm ready for the run. Uh, because in this 2020 year, I'm going to hear the Lion of Judah roar over my life, over this church, over my family, over my situation. In Jesus' name. Ah, oh, God. Hebrews 1. There's seven revelations in Hebrews 1 of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let me give you those seven revelations as I come to a conclusion. Number one, Jesus Christ governs the universe. Christ is the appointed heir of all things. Number two, he's the radiance of God's glory. Christ represents God himself. Number three, he sits at the right hand of God. Christ sustains lives by his power. 
Number four, he's superior to angels. Christ is the controller of the universe. Number five, he's the begotten son of God. Christ is the redeemer of mankind. Number six, he fulfills the Old Testament law. Christ is the supreme mediator. And number seven, he's the firstborn. Christ is the glorious spokesperson for the family of God. Do you know when we have a family, there's always someone who rises up to be the spokesperson. But Christ is the spokesperson for this family of God. He speaks on our behalf. He speaks to powers and principalities. He speaks to God the Father. He speaks from heaven and he spoke from earth. Christ has represented us, will represent us, and will always represent us. But we have to walk hand in hand with the Savior. And Hebrews reminds us, because my God is superior, there is no other way but through Jesus Christ. Today, would you speak to your own soul and say, soul, this is a year I'm going to serve God like I've never done before, no matter who I am. As your pastor, I want to tell you, I'm fixing my eyes on Jesus. As a congregation, I want you to say to yourself what you will do for 2020. Where's your vision going to be? Is it going to be on everything or is it going to be on Jesus Christ? Because when it's on Christ, then everything changes. Amen? Let me read this scripture to you. Angels worship Christ. They praise him because of who he is, because he's so superior. But Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 17 says this. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Isn't that powerful? This is the Jesus we serve. Friends, if you've been feeling laid back, bored, not fully in love with Jesus, could you make a determination today? Jesus, you're superior to all things. And so I should give my all to the superior one. Not to things, but to the superior one. What are you believing for in 2020? Well, I'm believing for a great move of God, of the whole God, the Holy Spirit, to engulf this place and to spread to all areas around us. I'm praying that churches all around Durham are filled with the glory of God, that the power of the Lord will come upon them. Uh, but I'm praying that God flow out from us and into the worlds that you send us, into our workplace, into our homes, into our communities, into the, even the supermarkets, wherever we go. But God, give us an understanding of who you are so that as we represent you, that our faith will grow and our knowledge of you will go grow. Our strength will grow. Our hope will grow. That wherever we go, people will see that we are different because we believe in the superior God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything is through Christ. Everything is for Christ. And everything is by Christ. When I keep that perspective, my friends, dear church, I want you to know Jesus is unchangeable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever confusion, whatever complexity, Jesus is still superior to it all. And that's how we're going to face 2020. Worship team, would you come and help me? How are we going to face 2020? Recognizing throughout this year, week after week, we're going to grow in different passages. We're going to grow, grow through different passages. But we're going to remember one key thing. Jesus is superior. What are you facing? Jesus is superior. What are you gonna, how are you going to make it? I'm going to make it because Jesus is superior. He's not some little God. He is the great I am. He's not the one who can't do it. He's the one who is able to do all things. He is, he was, and he shall ever be. And if I can get that sealed up in my spirit, I'm going to live differently. I'm going to live differently. Mm. Spirit of the living God. Father, by the power of your spirit, flow upon us today. In this 2020 year, 
God, give us a 2020 vision so that our focus is sharp, our clarity is good, and the reality of what you want for our lives will take effect. Speak to every heart in this place today. In the name of Jesus. I want to ask this morning, over the course of this year, what are you planning to do with your life? I have to start off 2020 speaking to each one of us individually, but as a group collectively. What are you planning for 2020 spiritually? Is it just life as usual? Is it just church as usual? Is it just, oh, you know, I'm just doing my religious duty thing? Or are you asking God to do something supernaturally incredible? We just came through the season of moving from the natural, moving beyond the natural. Are you asking God this year to do something incredibly supernatural to cause you to be a greater witness for the kingdom of God? So right now, all over this place, I want every head bowed and I want you to just pray for a moment and ask God for clarity of vision clarity of vision. God, what, what, what is 2020 for me? God, give me clarity of vision. Give me clarity of vision. But would you take a minute this morning? This is the first Sunday of January 2020. The marker isn't that important. What's important is how we use it to reset the buttons in our lives. What is it that you're going to forsake? What is it that you're going to ignore? What is it that you're going to stop doing? What is it? I'm, I don't make resolution. Make yourself a commitment before God. God, ask him in prayer to help you. See, when we make resolution, we just speak from the top of our head. But when we go to prayer, we speak from the bottom of our heart. God, this is what I struggle with. And even if I say I'm going to do it, I can't do it without Christ. What is it that you're going to fix by the power of his name? What is it that you're going to release so that the world looks at you and says, what a child of God? What is it that you're going to do so that you're upholding the power of his name wherever you go? Would you just take a moment now and pray? All over, worship team even. Father, in the name of Jesus, we submit our lives to you. God, we can't make it without you. We think we're perfect, but God, Hebrew says only Jesus Christ is perfect. Father God, forgive any of us who feel we're perfect. God, there are times that we have a spirit of perfection in us, as if we're the only ones that know everything and can do everything and knows how to guide everything. But God, you never gave anyone that authority. It's only in Christ Jesus. So Father, help us with our imperfections to humble ourselves before you, that you can show us the path to take. My God, there's so much, God, healing and, and deliverance that needs to happen in this place. Would you deliver us from evil? That is what the, the prayer cry, oh God, that you taught your disciples. Deliver us from evil. Father, I pray today, deliver us from evil, that we, oh God, would walk uh, with a mindset of the glory of God and how privileged we are to be able to serve you, how privileged we are to know you in the name of Jesus. Father, this morning, oh God, would you cause us as a body of believers to remember that there's a world out there that doesn't know the light who is Jesus Christ. There's a world that doesn't know how powerful your name is. There's a world that doesn't know that you're coming again. There's a world, oh God, that is not aware that they're living in darkness, but they can come into the light because you are the force that can bring them through. Through. Father God, we are the ones you're sending out. Angels, oh God, they do your bidding, but we are your hands and your feet. In this 2020 year, show us how to walk. Show us how to live. Show us how, oh God, to reflect our lives before people so we're not biting and devouring each other, but we're instead using our energy to trample on the enemy. My God Almighty, strip us of the pride that causes us to want to be elevated for others to see and cause us oh God to oh God humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord that the world will hunger and thirst for what they see in us which is truth and love and righteousness and hope in the Holy Ghost my God this morning would you open your mouth and pray this morning this is the first Sunday of January 2020 what vision do you have for yourself God teach me how to walk 
my journey so that others are blessed because of me. Teach me, oh God, how to show them that, oh God, it's only by your strength and your power that we can make it. Lord, would you forgive us, oh God? We're all flesh and flesh fails, but the word of the Lord is in us. Would you magnify the word in us, oh God, that whatever we do will bring glory to your name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Before the worship team leads us in a song, I want to ask this. How many people this year, because you believe in the superiority of Jesus Christ, you're going to cry for salvation. You're going to pray for salvation for people in your life that you know are in darkness. If you're going to do that, if you're going to, don't commit it to me, your pastor, please. If you're committing, God, everything I do this year, I've got to, people are looking for angels when Jesus Christ is here. God, let me represent you to others. If you this year, you're going to pray, you're going to believe, you're going to cry for those who are walking in darkness. I want you to stand. And as you stand, we're going to pray for those people. God, it's my commitment, God. I've been too focused on myself. Folks, we've been too focused on ourselves when there's millions around us, not just overseas where we send missionaries. Your friends need to know the joy that you found. Your friends, your family needs to know the peace you found. But they'll only find it when you begin to press through for them. So right now, whatever their names are, would you begin to call out their name to the Lord? Would you just audibly, don't worry about people around you. You got friends that are in deep in darkness. Would you call out their names? You got family members you prayed for for years. Would you call on this Sunday morning in the beauty of holiness? Would you call out their name? Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you know, Lord God, every one of these names, oh God. Father, they're crying out from in this congregation. But God, make us a people, oh God, who not only speak it on the first Sunday but begin to fight for it begin to pray for it begin to believe for it for you're the God of the impossible your name is stronger greater and more powerful so Lord Jesus Almighty God would you hear these names lifted up in this auditorium God even as we go to prayer this week and break it down week and day after day cause us oh God to prioritize what is important that others will come and know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. That is, oh God, what we're believing for in 2020. Souls for the kingdom of God. For you are greater, you are mightier, you are stronger. And oh God, what you've done for us, we want you to do for others. So we ask it in the name of Jesus. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.